This is Twit. A lot of our, our, our listeners are in the IT and security space, and they're always looking for better techniques, especially in the case of we just recently talked about Punicode. Now, maybe you know, as a um, professional that kind of focuses on this types of stuff, you know, can you tell us maybe a little bit more about how, what you see as Punicode and, and, and how it's impacting things like DNS? Sure. Yeah. So Punicode, basically, you can think of it as a DNS encoding scheme. Um, mo- most, most of the time, as end users, we're not going to see Punicode. And if you do, you probably would flip out because it looks scary. Um, but the reason for Punicode to exist uh, is because we wanted to internationalize the internet, right? At its in, um, in original state, it's all English, ASCII, right? This, that's you know, all the programming languages you can only type in English letters. So that was quite unfair for the rest of the world that are not speaking English. Uh, and by the way, I speak Mandarin. I'm um, so you know that, and I've lived in Taiwan uh, recently uh, for for a while, for a few years. So I do see there's a significant part of the world that's relying on puny co working because that's how they can type in their local language into whatever software they're using, and DNS will be able to translate that using Punicode um, and then take them to the right place. Now, what's, what's the difficulty around battling against such an exploit? What, 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 are, what are organizations running into here, do you think? So I think the, 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 the so first let's define what's, what the difficulty is here. Sure. So, the, so from, the, from last week's uh, show, the, the, what happened was, you, because now we have access to not just English letters and numbers, I can pick a Cyrillic O that looks very much like a English O. Or in last week's case, it picks a, um, a letters that I can't pronounce. I think it was like a special K um, that looks like an English K, right? That is very difficult for humans to detect. Uh, it's in, in fact, actually, in some cases, it's impossible. The Greek Omicron letter in some certain fonts look exactly like an O. There's no way for humans to tell. Um, and a little bit on, you know, on my gripe about the registrars a little bit. Not every domain name registrar are security conscious. They're just happy to sell you a new domain name for ten ninety nine dollars a year. Um, some are better at, than, than the rest. So there's a lot of threat actors out there go, look, I can go register, you know, for example, uh, google.com. I'm going to swap out the O's with the Greek Omicron O. And I'm going to make a website that looks exactly like Google. And that's what happened uh, on the, the, the show last year. The news was somebody did that for KeePass. Um, no fault of KeePass. Just somebody says, look, it's a very popular domain name. I want to get it. I legally own it for whatever the, 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 the strange spelling is. Then now as a threat actor who legally owns the name, I can go get a certificate that looks exactly like that. So when you go click on your web browser, everything looks perfectly normal. You get that little lock, lock pad. This is all secure by TLS and your eyes can't tell the difference. So that's the problem. Right. And then like we were just talking about uh, the, all three of you were talking about the uh, users being either actually i think it's both the first line and the last line defense um so we don't want you know we but but we all agree we want to offload as much from the user as we can so telling your users to look at these letters or characters carefully is not the solution um the solution would be your dns this this comes originates from dns from domain names that's where we need to fix it um, so there are several approaches right now. There is a initiative called the uh, DNS Abuse Institute. They're trying to do it from a governing point of view to argue to the domain name registrars uh, and, uh, and I, I can to say, look, we got to have some policies in here. Uh, you can't sell internet security for 1099 a year. Okay, that's just not a good trade off. Somebody wants to buy Google.com with the misspelled O, we got to be able to say no. Um, so there's some, there's some efforts going on there. Um, but just kind of like Congress governing, it's going to take a while. And meanwhile, we have something, uh, for the rest of the world. 
uh, it's basically filtering. Um, so uh, the, the, the technology behind it is called RPZ. It's a, got a kind of nerdy name, Response Policy Zone. Basically, we leverage DNS itself to say, look, if somebody asks you, somebody, some user comes to you, say, I want to go to keypass.com. Okay, but that K is the, you know, doesn't matter what it's spelled like. I mean, it could be even say infoblocks.com. It could be twit.com. And in the back end, this DNS server, we'll call it a protective DNS server, would have the intelligence loaded ahead of time to say, these are the bad places. If somebody asks you of any of these names, I don't care if they're spelled in English, in Korean, in Chinese, whatever, we don't care. As long as I know it's a bad destination, I'm going to lie to the uh, end users um, and just say this name doesn't exist. Now, I'd rather they get a page timeout or they get an error message in the web browser than taking them to a KeePass or Google lookalike place and get infected. So again, that's uh, so that so that technology exists. It's called um, broadly protective DNS, um, and usually at the core of that product or packaging is the technology called response policies on RPZ. And where do these policies get applied at? Do they get like, for instance, if I am an organization that has some web services or some services that I host on, let's say, AWS and I use their DNS services, where do I go and, and actually set this all up? What do I go patch? Where do I go set, set the policies at? Very good. Very good question. So it would be at the so there are two types of DNS servers, the ones that find answers and the ones that host answers. So this will be the ones that find answers. So I think most listeners would know. Uh, Google public DNS 8.8.8.8 uh, 4.4.4.4. So it would be these servers. It would be whatever your devices or even at home, if you have a home little router slash DNS server, um, that's where you want to add these policy. But then, of course, it's like, well, where do you get the, the that list of bad people from? Um, so that's where some of the commercial because uh, it's it's a full time job and more to keep up with malicious domains being registered on a I don't want to even say it's not even hourly it's every minute every second there's new domain names being registered that are malicious so there are companies who dedicate themselves uh, including my employer that's what they do they and then they get the list they publish it push it out to the uh, to people who can get it now if you are at home I know most of the listeners are enterprise background so you probably already have something similar uh, but for the home users there are free of cost uh, uh, uh alternatives uh so quad 9 9.9.9.9 is a uh, non-profit organization uh if you point your i i um if you point your home dns look up to this ip address and if you somehow try to go to a malicious DNS name, it will lie to you and say, I'm going to lie for, to, to, to protect you. It, that doesn't exist. That name doesn't exist. Time out. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. With all the same fun of IT Pro TV, ACI is amplified with new solutions for all your IT training needs. Entertain your team while they learn. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro enterprise solution plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team. 